In the Western world, more developed world, we use motorcycles. I do it for enjoyment, for happiness, for, you know, you can choose. While in other parts of the world, motorcycles are used for basic transportation. It's, it's a cheap, it's economic, it's light, and, and basically that's why in some places it's, uh, the use is so big. And that's why when we are thinking in solutions to improve that, we always need to keep in mind affordability and practicality. We think it's important to start acting now and to actually do the same developments in terms of safety that we have done for car occupants during the last uh, years. Okay, so here he is coming in. My head's going to go forward. So this is the reference test. And so the first thing that we need to do is to check how the computer simulations, the computer models of this, work in comparison with real life. And that's vital for us because we're going to use those and run the simulations over and over again to understand how we can influence things. So we learn what happens to the bike, how it moves in the collision, what happens to the car and how that moves in the collision, where deformation appears on it. We also find out about how the rider comes off the motorcycle. Now that's going to be important because that point when they leave the motorcycle is where we need to do something with them where we need to intervene, perhaps, in their safety. To improve motorcyclists' safety, uh, there are several ways of doing so. Taking the safe system approach, thinking about safer roads, um, safe vehicle and, and safe rider. You can have, for instance, protective clothing on the rider. Helmets is a perfect example. That's one of the most important countermeasures. When we talk about the roads, it's also to make sure you have a traffic environment that is as safe as possible for motorcyclists. Then when we talk about safe rider, it's also one way that you perhaps can educate and coach the riders of, of being more safety aware, but also informing them when there are hazards in terms of dangerous roads or malfunctions in the vehicle. I think that we haven't got to the bottom of what can be done in the crash. So we're looking after the in-crash behavior of the rider and really taking care of what that happens. Whilst pre-crash safety may stop some collisions from happening, reduce their speed, collisions will still happen for a long time to come. And I think the systems that we can potentially put on the bike or on the rider can really do something good there. In Autoliv, we estimate that the lives that we save today with our products is about 30, 35,000 lives per year. Uh, we believe that we focus on vulnerable road users. This number can increase to 130,000 easily by 2030. And this is strategic for us in our vision zero in terms of fatalities, which means that basically one casualty in traffic safety is too much.